often, isn't it? Here we are in the lounge. We want to talk to you. You have noticed that we are now five. So we have uh, John kabat who is uh, meeting us and he's going to be with us uh, during the rest of those three days. So how do you present John? Some of you know him very well. We could say that uh, CV, you uh, doctor of molecular biology, emeritus uh, professor of medicine, University of Massachusetts, and very uh, important uh, founding father of the Center for Mindfulness in Medicine and the MBSR program, which is nowadays produced in more than 800 hospitals in the whole world. And John, for the past 39 years, has nurtured a new consciousness in society because it touches the medical world of mindfulness, education, but also businesses and the whole society. So we'll have opportunity to talk about it. We'll talk about it during the round table of this Sunday of all those societies challenges of discovering this mindfulness uh, throughout the world. Now, this evening, let us stay here. Let us talk about the artist's performances. And I'd like to, first of all, if you allow me, to look at Marion and Sylvie ask you. Sylvie Guillem, very s often you say that uh, the stage is the true moment for you, le moment vrai, that is prepared by a lot of upstream work. We've seen you concentrate, practice, concentrate in backstage, and all of this work is indispensable. In fact, it is the true moment indeed, but what does it really mean for you being on stage? Pleasure, principally, only, only pleasure. But before, not so much pleasure, no. Before, you have doubts, you are anguished, you are fearful, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. I've uh, been like that for many, many years, and uh, really it's a release to go on stage, and it's a true pleasure. You've chosen to show us a solo dance, too, by Russell Maliphant, uh, very impressive, where everything is said in eight minutes. What does it represent for you? Well, it's uh, full of contrast. And Russell is very interested in how the body works, how it functions, and he's done a lot of technique. He's uh, looked at a lot of things, uh, Qigong, among others. And it's very linked to breathing, concentration, and sometimes even too much. Because uh, I remember in Madrid, we were dancing. He did a one, year, one hour of Qigong afterwards, and then 10 minutes of uh, uh, shifting one finger, I had to really shake him up uh, so that he uh, is aware of us on stage. So he took a lot of time for this uh, training. And you can see it in that uh, uh, solo dance. Uh, there's a lot of uh, weakness, but also a lot of strength. There's this box, which seems to be very, very small. But uh, you have some light playing on it. And you think that you're on a theater stage. And I did like very much this construct. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to meditation. We'll come back about what it represents, how discovered it. But Marion Cotillard, down to you now. We heard about the way to meditation through this uh, text by Tish Nathan, uh, the uh, way to mindfulness. What does it represent, this text, to you? I love uh, the teachers the masters who use simple words and discover themselves. It's the very beginning of the book, and it's extremely simple to read. And it brings up a logic which really talked to me and is full inspiration for me for something that is totally simple. Uh, the glass of lemonade, the breathing, the smile, everything is there on the text. Yes, it's the beginning of the book, but afterwards he looks more into depth, into 
this path towards serenity. But in breathing, yes, you can find everything in the present moment. It's quite true that what were we saying? It's simple. Well, it's not necessarily so easy to release yourself of all those thoughts which are an invasion of your mind. The book later on goes into all of this kindness, caring, mindfulness we can have towards ourselves. Myself, when I discovered uh, meditation, I read a lot about it. And it's true that um, I was in a kind of time when I wanted to have release results straight away, and that had no sense, really. And in the same time, I had a lot of guides uh, Tishnatan, of course, but uh, other books, uh, Dalai Lama, Mathieu Ricard as well, books by Krishnamurti, who took away all my complexes. What I mean by that is that they explained to me that you do not have to reach anything uh, exploration yourself and the knowledge of yourself, the thoughts that you didn't have to judge them, you just have to observe them to see how I was internally functioning. And it is extremely interesting, especially in my job. Uh, my fascination is observing humankind, how they function, and to look at them from the inside and see how I can self-pollute myself sometimes. This was totally fascinating to me and concentrated me in that practice. We'll come back to this practice, to your work, but I'll go over to John now. Uh, I know simply from you that you had a, a mother who was a painter, an artist, a um, father who was a researcher, a scientist. So in the end, you had those two dimensions are combined. Uh, so would you like to react to everything you've heard and uh, seen here? How does art and artistic expression is a way to get into the present moment, to get into mindfulness? Oh. <coughs> first thing I'd like first thing I'd like to say is uh, my apologies for not speaking in French. Ce que je voudrais dire en premier, c'est vous adresser mes excuses de ne pas pouvoir parler en français. I was really uh, blown away by your presentation and by the text that that you read. J'ai vraiment été très très touché par uh, votre uh, présentation et par le texte qui a été lu. And to contextualize this, uh, to contextualize this entire. Uh, event that we're participating in, it really is a kind of recognition of deep interconnectedness between artistic expression, scientific inquiry, and meditative awareness. Et pour contextualiser euh, par rapport à, cette, euh, à ces rencontres, il y a, il y a vraiment euh, une euh, danse qui existe entre euh, l'expression artistique, la recherche scientifique et euh, la pratique méditative. Since you mentioned my parents, I, I watched my mother and father very carefully from the time I was a very young boy and I realized that uh, they both had profound ways of investigating the world. J'ai beaucoup observé quand j'étais enfant mes parents dont vous parlez effectivement euh, un artiste et l'autre euh, scientifique et j'ai réalisé à quel point euh, cela leur permettait d'avoir une immense compréhension du monde. But they couldn't actually understand each other's way of seeing the world because it was just uh, too complicated from the science part, point of view from my mother and just uh, my father just didn't have uh, the genes for seeing paintings in their depth. 
Et euh, malgré cela, ça ne leur permettait pas vraiment de, de comprendre euh, euh, l'accès la, la, au monde de l'autre. Pour ma mère, la science était quelque chose d'assez euh, difficile d'accès. Mais je vois que même comme un jeune homme, il y a différentes façons de connaître le monde. Mais je, je voyais cela comme différentes façons de, de, de voir le monde. C'est un petit peu comme s'il y avait d'un côté le, le monde scientifique de mon père et de l'autre le monde artistique de ma mère. Et quand j'ai découvert la méditation, quand j'étais à peu près 20 ans, j'ai réalisé que c'était une façon de unifier ces différentes façons de connaître. Et quand j'ai eu 20 ans et que j'ai euh, pratiqué la méditation, j'ai euh, réalisé à quel point la méditation pouvait être euh, un moyen pour réunifier ces deux façons d'être au monde et de connaître. There are different ways of interrogating, understanding and expressing a deep connectivity in the world. Et euh, ce sont deux, deux moyens euh, d'investiguer, euh, d'exprimer et de comprendre euh, l'accès au monde. So awareness, in some sense, can hold art and science in a way that is potentially profoundly transformative for the person who is meditating. La, la, la conscience, la présence peut permettre d'accéder de, à des niveaux très profonds de, de compréhension de ce qu'est l'art et aussi la science. So if you're asking me to say a few things about what we witnessed this evening, What I witnessed in watching you dance uh, was complete astonishment. Talking about talk about awe, complete astonishment at the way your body did what it did with the silence, with the sound, with the rhythm. It w it woke me up to. It surprised me. It astonished me. I mean, talk about wonder. And um, thank you. Si si vous me demandez ce dont j'ai été témoin et ce dont j'ai fait l'expérience à vous voir danser, c'est un vrai étonnement, un vrai émerveillement, une réelle surprise de voir ainsi manifester une sorte de complétude au travers du mouvement, des sons, des silences, des rythmes aussi. Et cela m'a vraiment touché et ça m'a éveillé. Le problème avec ça, c'est que dès que j'utilise des mots pour décrire ce que tu as fait, ça le le problème avec cette façon de faire, c'est qu'aussitôt que j'utilise les mots pour décrire ce que, ce que tu, tu as fait, ça disparaît, c'est fini. What we experienced was a direct transmission. Mm -hmm. Ce dont nous avons fait l'expérience, c'est en quelque sorte une transmission directe. And I will carry that inside me for a very long time, just around the possibilities of the human body and human artistry when body, mind, movement, sound, silence, black and white, light and darkness all come together. Quand le, le, je garderai ça longtemps euh, dans mon cœur, euh, cet émerveillement devant euh, ce qui euh, est vécu dans cette expression, quand le, le corps, dans euh, les, tant d'immobilité, tant de mouvement, de rythme, de son, de silence, euh, exprime... Euh, And as for Thich Nhat Hanh's words, I know Thich Nhat Hanh enough to know that what he's trying to do with words is what you are doing with dance. It's not about it in itself, it's about it in relationship to who's reading the words, hearing the words, digesting the words, being astonished by what the words are pointing to that's underneath the words. Et euh, sur le texte lu de, de Thich Nhat Hanh, je connais Thich Nhat Hanh suffisamment pour savoir que 
au travers des mots qu'il utilise dans des textes, il cherche à faire la même chose que ce qui a été fait avec la danse et les mouvements du corps, c'est-à-dire d'accéder à ce qui est en deçà des mots, à cette compréhension et cette interrelation entre ce qui est lu, celui ou celle qui le lit et, ce qui est, et ceux qui l'entendent. So I think what the two of you have given us this evening is a fantastic launching of this two and a half day conference that is almost like um, arrows of love straight into the heart. Et ce que vous avez fait ce soir est euh, une expression magnifique de ces rencontres sur sa méditation. Et, et Sam, ce sont euh, comme des, des, des flèches qui vont directement au cœur. So rather than wounding, they are profoundly healing if we're actually paying attention. Et au lieu de blesser, elles sont euh, à l'inverse profondément <coughs> guérissantes ou transformatives si on n'est présent, attentif. Alors, on va, on va rester un petit peu. So, we go stay close to your experiences because we're lucky tonight. You, you are ready to talk about uh, your path to meditation. Sylvie Guillem, you said that when you perform, you can find a type of uh, fulfillment, uh, but this is uh, something that is very fragile. And the more you have experience, the more you have anxieties and you feel the pressure before. So it's a particularly stressful moment uh, and w where you've seen a little window open. Can you perhaps tell us, well, it's a little embarrassing to talk about that. Many artists and we know that, before they go on stage, spend a lot of time in the loo, at the toilet. Uh, sorry to talk about it, but that's, uh, but Dustin Hoffman said that uh, when, you look, when you're looking for a, um, an artist, maybe go look for him in the loo. So uh, I had to, to dance uh, one day because there, this piece is very difficult to dance. Uh, it's very difficult to do well, to perform well. So I, I was, I had, uh, I had these ideas, these thoughts, and and uh, it, it became a worldwide problem. And I was in the loo. It was at Covent Garden, and uh, behind me there was a, a little window with gave on to Covent Garden, and there were hundreds of people there, but they, they weren't worried uh, about what I was going to be doing that night. So it calmed me down. It calmed me down, and it put uh, things in perspective. Uh, so, so it doesn't mean that I went in uh, very, very frivolously. But finally, I said, I, sh I realized that I shouldn't make a mountain of a molehill. It is stress stressful, but I could dance Swan Lake. So John was saying, you know, we, we have these thoughts uh, and we pollute our mind and we have all these anxieties. Uh, so it was that little window and the fact of, of looking at people who were shopping in Covent Garden and I had a feather on my head, I was going to put on my ballerina dress. Well, it calmed me down. So that little window has uh, helped you after that? Yes. I realized that when I had all these dreadful thoughts uh, and when things really became uncontrollable, I thought about that little window. And then I had I, I had uh, other windows. Thanks to Russell, I, I went towards Qigong that helped me before going onto the stage. It's something that quietens me down, the Qigong, rather than have all these uh, delirious uh, ideas. Well, I'm not betraying you if I say that, that up to the age of 39, you, everything was easy. You, you, your body was obeying you, and everything was easy, and you never had an accident. Uh, no, at, 
up to the age of 36. But that's not too bad, up to the age of 36. Uh, and th so your body was always uh, there. Well, up to the age of 36, I thought I, I could not be destroyed. I was lucky. It only happened to me at 36. There were, there are colleagues of mine uh, who were who, who injured themselves, you know, early on. It, it happened to me quite late, but it was a shock. It was a, and this accident did it made you feel differently about your body? Yes, of course, of course. I had to learn to dance with other fears fears to injure myself or to have to stop dancing. So it was, uh, I felt very anxious. Uh, but uh, I learned how to dance differently and more mindful. At the beginning, it's a bit difficult. It's strange, uh, because when you're young, you can do anything. And you don't even think. And it's a pity, because uh, I realized things only at the age 36. Before, I was unconsciously uh, happy. But after 36, I was more and more aware. So what, what does that mean when you're more and more aware? It means that you realize that time is moving on, that you have to be more careful, more attentive. And there's a lot more. Everything is more. You have stronger feelings, stronger sensations. You're more sensitive to things. And at times, you can find moments when time is no longer the same. Time became longer. It's, it's as if I was watching myself. It's difficult to explain. But the dimension of time changes on stage and also when you're off stage and also in your life. So this little window on Convent Garden, Marion Cotillard, you had an experience too. Meditation, you were familiar with it when you were a child because your mother practiced. So it's something that you were familiar with. But you never went towards it when you when you became an adult. And perhaps there was a moment uh, in your professional life, uh, there was a moment when you were stressed out, and maybe meditation came to you. Uh, and uh, what happened? What happened? Well, when I was a child, uh, and my teenage years, I was in an environment where my mother meditated. There were a lot of people who came to our house who were on a spiritual path, if one can put it in a nutshell. So I was a teenager, and I didn't judge. I wasn't judgmental, because that was not part of my education, to be judgmental. But I didn't feel a vital need to discover what they were discovering. And I was, uh, I was, I was uh, ill at ease and a little tortured as an adolescent. But I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to receive. And uh, a few years ago, I uh, I wanted to lead a fuller life. I would say because there were wonderful things that were happening to me, and I had the feeling that it was happening to someone else. And I said to myself, well, there is a way for me to reconnect myself with myself. So when you open that door, what is absolutely extraordinary, messengers come to you. Uh, you, have, uh, you meet people, you read texts, and I d discovered uh, the, the writings of Eckhart Tolle, which was a very important uh, uh, moment uh, on that path I had embarked upon. And then I was start going to start a film. I, d I didn't know whether I really wanted to be in that film. It was uh, uh, an American film. 
a very important American in film. I, I had, and, and you know, because of my experience, I, I knew it could be very boring because you have very long days uh, and you, you do something and you have a green screen behind you. So I had already had such an experience of filming uh, and uh, suddenly I, uh, I felt, my God, what am I getting myself into? There was this chasm that opened up inside myself. So, so it really affected me mentally. So I was about to start filming, and, it, and I was already I felt suffocation because when I when, when I film, I, I can read other things when other texts. What I need to do is I always concentrate on what I'm doing. I cannot watch other films or, or read something else. I'm concentrating on my film. And, and, uh, and I thought, you know, they're going to be very long days. I'm going to spend my time on my mobile phone. And suddenly I got this thought that came to me. Uh, I said to myself, you should pretend that this is a meditation course. You're going to be on the set, and you're going to pretend that you are with a meditation group. It lasted three months, and it was magical. I, I, I had never practiced meditation regularly before. I, did it here and there. I tried to, to, to concentrate on my breathing and because I was familiar with meditation and all the writings that I mentioned before and the authors I mentioned. Uh, but it was practically orgasmic, those three months. I felt all the cells of my body. And I had the time because it was three months. It was a very intensive uh, uh, period. And it, it opened up this feeling of freedom because I said to myself, I'll never get bored again. And this is the truth. I don't anymore. And to say to myself, well, I don't have time to meditate. I have two kids. I have so much to do. I read something. If, if you are not busy, not too busy, then meditate 20 minutes. And if you are very, very busy, meditate one hour. But I, it was difficult to me, for me to find that one hour. I was able to do it here and there. But after this film that I made, and after the meditation I practiced, it changed my daily life. It really did. And it changed my life completely. John, you said before uh, you joined us, we meditated a little bit, and John said something to me that struck me. Meditation is a lifelong learning, but everything is in the present moment. So we have the feeling that meditation is like a mountain, but everything is in the present moment. And what you both have said echoes what John said. So. John, can you say something about the present moment? Uh, give us the path to find this present moment, which is so difficult for us to, to catch. Well, nobody would be in this hall if they... Sorry. <coughs> nobody in, would be in this hall if you didn't already, in some sense, have a love affair with the present moment. And so have a direct experience of intimacy with the present moment. And uh, what both of you are saying is just an extraordinary embodiment of that. 
and very inspiring. The, the present moment really is not a concept. It's an experience, but it can easily be turned into a, a concept. And then you're trying to find the present moment when you're already in the present moment. And that can generate, uh, it's like driving your car with the emergency brake on. You're going to sort of burn up trying to get somewhere when all you need to do is release the brake. So, so. sorry, I forgot that it's not simultaneous translation. <laughs> Um, I don't remember what you begin with. Oh, that's all right. No, 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 no. Uh, just, just tell me what you begin with. Ça aussi, c'est un exercice de méditation. Que... That's also an exercise of meditation to uh, simultaneously translate. Uh, Jean Gérard is, um, is passing the thoughts of uh, John. Moment. Uh, everybody oh, yes, has I got it. I got it. The I, got it. And they gave I got us it. Vous ne seriez pas là si, si euh, vous n'aviez pas déjà une vraie histoire d'amour avec euh, euh, l'instant présent. Et euh, l'instant le, 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 présent est quelque chose de, effectivement, très très particulier. Mais ce que vous avez euh, manifesté là sont des, des très beaux exemples de comment euh, ça, ça peut être vécu. À part que ça peut aussi être euh, simplement un concept, une idée. Et que si c'est simplement un concept, une idée, c'est juste l'inverse dont il s'agit. Ça peut être un petit peu comme lorsque vous conduisez une voiture et quand même temps que vous conduisez, vous avez le frein à main qui est serré. Euh, C'est impossible d'être de, de, fluide et de, et de conduire correctement comme ça. So the interesting thing is that we observed some performances tonight, but meditation is not a performance. Ce qui est intéressant, c'est qu'on on a, on a vécu euh, <coughs> des performances ce soir, mais euh, j'aimerais dire que le, la méditation n'est en rien une performance. Nor is it a rehearsal for a performance at some other time. Et c'est pas non plus un entraînement pour une performance à un autre moment. It's a willingness to actually drop in on your experience and allow yourself to experience what it is that you're already experiencing. C'est une, une proposition de plonger euh, euh, complètement dans euh, l'expérience qui est en train d'être vécue en se rendant compte euh, d'être en train de vivre cette expérience. So, you, you know, uh, we could use the breath to do that, and that's been the example that we've spoken about this evening as well. You could feel your breathing. On peut utiliser par exemple la méditation pour euh, s'entraîner à cela et euh, c'est l'exemple qui est cité par euh, Teach Nathan dans, dans la lecture ce soir et on peut plonger dans, dans sa propre respiration. In term, if you want to find the present moment, find this breath. Et si vous voulez trouver euh, l'instant présent, trouvez juste cette respiration. None of you care one bit about the last breath. Aucun d'entre nous, vous, ne, ne se préoccupe de euh, la dernière euh, respiration. C'est juste cette respiration avec laquelle vous voulez être en contact. Mais l'ironie de tout ceci est que la breath est ce qu'on appelle, techniquement parlant, un objet d'attention. Mais l'ironie de tout cela, c'est que la respiration, et si on en parle d'un point de vue un peu technique, euh, peut être l'objet de l'attention. So Donc c'est une aide. C'est en quelque sorte une aide à la méditation. But the real meditation is in the attending itself, not the object of the attending. Mais la vraie méditation est dans euh, euh, la présence euh, à cet objet, pas dans l'objet lui-même. That's why powerful performances take our breath away. C'est pour ça qu'une une performance aussi extraordinaire euh, nous coupe le souffle. We can't believe it. We are stopped in terms of our thinking and just go. Ah. On est on est en quelque sorte arrêté dans dans nos pensées et juste présent par obligation. If you encounter Guernica, you're going to go. Ah. Si vous regardez uh, Guernica, vous êtes aussi dans uh, cet état de complète uh, abandon. If you really look at a Monet, you're going to go. Ah. Si vous regardez uh, une peinture de Monet, vous êtes aussi dans ce. Ah. It's transporting. Ça nous transporte. It brings us back to ourselves. Et ça nous ramène directement à nous-mêmes. 
So meditation isn't as complicated as we make it out to be. Et la méditation n'est pas aussi compliquée finalement qu'on a souvent tendance à s'imaginer ou à en faire. So if you set out to meditate by trying to get to some special place where it's all going to be wonderful at some future time. Si par exemple vous êtes en train de méditer sur un chemin où vous dites que ça va être formidable un beau jour au bout de ce chemin. A lot of us look at meditation that way and it's really setting us up for often a lifetime of desperately trying to discover something that you're already sitting on top of. Et, et pour ceux qui méditent de cette façon, euh, c'est une euh, façon très très efficace de euh, ne jamais trouver ce sur quoi euh, vous êtes déjà assis. And looking everywhere else for. En, en cherchant partout ailleurs. So just to complete that, it's the recognition that you're already whole. Pour euh, le, le dire d'une façon résumée aussi, c'est la reconnaissance que euh, on, on est déjà entier, plein. So the Heart Sutra. One of the supreme non-dual teachings of Mahayana Buddhism says there's no place to go, nothing to do, nothing to attain. Why don't we believe that? Et dans euh, le Sutra du Cœur, qui est un, un des enseignements euh, du Mahayana, il est dit qu'il n'y a rien à atteindre, nulle part à aller et rien à obtenir. Et pourquoi ne pas simplement euh, essayer d'appliquer cela? And then in the next sentence it says, The Bodhisattva, the meditation practitioner, attains supreme perfect enlightenment. Et euh, il est dit juste après que euh, avec cela, il est possible d'atteindre l'éveil le, le, suprême. But it's not what you think. Mais ce n'est rien à voir avec ce euh, à propos de quoi on peut penser. And it's not what you're grasping after. Et ce n'est pas ce après quoi on peut essayer de s'accrocher. And it has to be lived and embodied. Ça a juste besoin d'être vécu et incarné. And when we see or hear or feel or a great work of art or performance, that is the embodiment of wakefulness in that moment. Et quand on voit de si euh, extraordinaire performance artistique euh, de danse ou de, de, de lecture, euh, ça c'est vraiment euh, une incarnation complète. So the only other thing I'll say is there are in, in infinite number of ways to cultivate meditative awareness or mindfulness so that you don't have to go anywhere else that you can just be right at home and have the very kind of realization that you had like on the set I don't need to be bored I don't need to endure this for the next three months I can turn the whole thing into what it already is my life unfolding how am I going to be in wise relationship to it et euh, il y a un nombre infini de façons de pouvoir euh, méditer en quelque sorte et euh, entrer euh, dans ce que cela permet de, de réaliser. Et euh, ton exemple est, est absolument magnifique de tout d'un coup euh, réaliser que euh, ben, je ne suis pas obligé de m'ennuyer euh, à mourir pendant trois mois et que je peux simplement euh, être présent à moi-même et, et à la relation que j'ai avec ce qui se passe et que ça change tout. And we already have mindfulness, so we don't have to acquire it. All we need to do is befriend it. Et c'est ainsi que c'est souvent considéré comme déjà présent en chacun d'entre nous et qu'on n'a pas besoin de le chercher ailleurs. On a juste besoin de le reconnaître et de rentrer en amitié avec. And the only time we ever have to befriend it is now. Et le seul moment où on a besoin d'être en amitié ainsi, c'est juste maintenant. Alors pour certains, for some, this is an echo to a personal experience. I'll say it straight away. For those who are impatient to try, tomorrow morning there will be a meditation guided by John at 9.30 in the morning. I'll give you some more detail later on. But I'll come back to Sylvie now. We talked about breathing. And you told me when uh, we discussed about it, uh, you said uh, that when you discovered meditation and uh, you wanted to initiate to mindfulness, and you said that in well dancing, the dancers do not breathe. I was slightly astonished to hear. Oh, yes, that's quite true. Especially in classical ballet, there's a lot of things that we do in apnea. 
uh, the solos are rather short, solos are about two, three minutes. I, of course, it's not a real apnea because I'm not able to do it, but this is a, we're not taught to breathe. It's very difficult in classical ballet dance. Uh, girls, we have some corsets, so we're very tight. We have some, uh, you don't see our, fit, uh, our legs, uh, just like the straight jackets. And um, yes, it's uh, true, we are not being taught how to breathe properly. So this was a very long path for you to learn to breathe. Well, yes, it's a bother. It's something that you do without realizing. All of a sudden, you've got to concentrate on it. And it upsets everything. It was upsetting my own breathing. And I was thinking about a cartoon of Schultz. Uh, Charlie Brown, the Snoopy, is, uh, at one point Charlie Brown says, well, I've got a tongue in my mouth and the fact that I find this very strange thing in my mouth and uh, pay attention to my tongue in my mouth, all of a sudden, he thought it was practically not normal. And to concentrate on this breathing, uh, all of a sudden, uh, perturbed me. And then you did an initiation uh, into mindfulness with Jean-Gérard Bloch. Yes, indeed, it was good, it was intense. It was the first time for me, it was five days long. It was good. I thought that we were floating, and then when I stopped the five days, I had three, four days when I really was sick. So I thought, well, some things were coming up to the surface here. And now, meditation for you is something that you're trying to be familiar with, is something that is uh, slowly taking its uh, space in a type of life that is slightly different now. You're not so much on the stage anymore. Well, yes, that's true. We used to have the stage, everything that it represented to uh, control, pacify my fears and my anger because that's what I resent very uh, often, anger and fear. And the time when I had all the things, uh, the rehearsals, creations, uh, the performances, the stage, I could deal with it. It was one way of uh, blowing up some steam. And I had discipline every morning. I knew what was my life. Uh, I knew exactly what I had to do to attain whatever. And now I haven't got that anymore. And I have to find a reason to get up in the morning. I have to find something. I have to find some discipline. I have to uh, channel my anger because there's a lot of things that make me angry. Uh, I don't live just for dancing, but it was my life. Uh, whether I want it or not, it was my life. And I did other things in parallel. Uh, I was part of associations, uh, safeguarding the oceans. Um, uh, Yes, and I, you still have this anger, yes, and I had to find a way to try and uh, control and deal this kind of uh, sentiment because only with being angry, that doesn't help you. We can say a little word about uh, angriness. You became vegan, I think, quite a long time. It started this awareness uh, raising uh, before the stage. Yes, about eight years before I retired, I decided for moral reasons, not for health reasons, to become vegetarian. And then, a few months later, I became vegan. And all of this is linked up to everything that is happening, pollution, anything to do with uh, these the voiceless animals, as I call them. Uh, very often when we talk about that, yes, well, animals is a little bit like uh, teddy bears. But yes, they haven't got any voice to represent them, and that really upsets me to see what we're doing, what human being is doing, not just to other human beings, but to beings that have absolutely no means to defend themselves. So I'm really, really angry about it. And there's a lot of things I would like to do, but I don't want to be uh, blinded by this, angry, uh, by this anger. There's a lot of emotion. It's uh, very shocking. It's overwhelming. And I have to find a tool to help me through that. But you've said you've become a vegan. You said that um, you were 
you loved to have uh, saucisson cut meat. Uh, yes, I adored it when I was a child. Yes, it really was a moral choice not to eat meat. And people who know me, you, you've become vegetarian, even vegan, you. Oh, yes. And with this particular characteristic that uh, when you are aware of yourself, of the world around you, all of this is linked and something is happening. There's a path that is being led. Here, I regret not to have done it beforehand. I really regret it. But maybe I was busy doing other things. I was concentrating on other things. And there are some things that happen to your life when they're supposed to happen. I've read a book. I've seen a program on TV. I've seen on the internet. I said, no, I can't continue being that. And then I had all those decisions that came naturally. Marion Cotillard. Uh, you were engaged for ecology, we'll talk about it tomorrow for the round table, but I'd like to stay on meditation here. I think it nurtures also your roles in the cinema. You said that um, it was always very important to nurture your characters with a lot of um, work, but you do that slightly differently compared to the beginning, and now that you've found uh, meditation mindfulness to help you. Well, in fact, they are not doing it differently but now I identify what I used to do when I started working on a character. It's something that I've always done, but without really, well, let's say, I'm not identifying it as a type of meditation, but I can't identify it as such, but really I did have an approach, how shall I say, I don't think it's even a technique. But the first thing that I do when I have to build up a character is I put myself in a state of being totally available for all the information that could come through. That could be created by myself or coming through others. I don't know how to mention it really. It's a slight meditative state where I open myself to the present moment and what this moment is going to bring to me and still being connected to the character that I'm supposed to accompany me, uh, I'm supposed to be for a few months of shooting. And that's how I always worked practically. It's very efficient to start with, to stop the flow of my own thinking, to connect myself to the flow of thinking of somebody else. It's not pure meditation. I'll take inspiration or let myself be invaded by the thoughts of somebody else. It seems slightly mystical, but it's, it's a technique, in fact, that I use. And it's true that when my life was upended, uh, overwhelmed, transformed might be the best word to use. I realized that in many stages of my life, uh, certainly in my work at that time, there was the starting shadows of a more profound transformation, even more personal transformation for me. So it's not just in the world of work for me, but it also spilled over to my own life uh, beyond my job. John, would you like to react to what we've heard? You also said that meditation is not uh, to attain something that is outside, but to allow you to be exactly where you are and to allow the world to be exactly what it is at this instant now. Do, is that what you hear in the witnessing of uh, Marion Cotillard and uh, Sylvie Guillem? Very much. Very much. Very much. Um, if, you, if you don't mind my, my turning this a little bit, um, we were together uh, yesterday and today, part of yesterday and part of today, on a meditation retreat off uh, on a mountain top. And um, I actually invited everybody who was on this retreat 
to wake up an hour earlier than they had uh, agreed to to intensify the amount of time that we had that we'd have to practice both of you knew that you were going to be performing this evening and i would like to ask you how much you were concerned about like n maybe waking up an hour early would influence how you were going to be able to perform later later today first maybe we can translate <laughs> alors je voudrais euh, changer un petit peu la façon dont euh, vous avez proposé de d'aborder cela en partageant le fait que euh, nous avons été euh, hier soir et, et toute la journée euh, à, à méditer ensemble euh, dans une forme de mini retraite euh, dans la montagne euh, et, et euh, sachant que au cours de cette retraite nous avons un peu modifié l'horaire tel qu'il était prévu en proposant de euh, se réveiller euh, et de commencer une heure plus tôt euh, que ce qui était prévu et comment est-ce que vous vous avez euh, euh, vécu ça euh, vous euh, sachant qu'il y avait ce soir cette, cette performance, ce temps et cette euh, perspective d'avoir à être euh, en forme. Oui, on est euh... debout depuis 6 heures du matin. 5h30. <rire> We woke up at 6 o'clock. No, no, actually 5.30 a.m. this morning. Well, in fact, for myself, I have a routine that I follow. I know that meditation, even if we started at 6 a.m. this morning, I had uh, experience with Jean Gérard. Uh, it wasn't six o'clock, it was seven o'clock at the time, which is still exceptional for me. Uh, six a.m. for me wasn't so much of a problem, but it wasn't looking, uh, climbing up a mountain, climbing up steps, etc., etc. So even if uh, it's difficult to be immobile in meditation for myself, I knew that afterwards my routine of rehearsing for my performance, uh, uh, resting, sleeping, uh, warming up, uh, uh, there's a whole routine that I have to go through and that enables me to calculate back to be in good shape for the performance. Mario, well, I, I wasn't there at 6 a.m. I played truant. Uh, well, we didn't want to say it. Well, I didn't want to play truant, but in order to, I came at 2 a.m. in the morning. I went to bed at 2 a.m. in the morning. So I thought that if I really want to profit very much from this uh, day, it was better that I sleep a little bit better, at least five hours and not four. But if I had gotten up in time, I don't know if necessarily I would have thought about what was going to happen this evening. I had an immense joy to be with you today. It really feels good personally in the society as it is, where we all are fragmented, fractioned, is to be gathered with energies who want to be pure energies, and we can share this together look at each other into the eyes directly without having any fear. Even if you have a fear, then you welcome this fear and you realize that you can go beyond. And it's totally not a good answer, but uh, I just wanted to answer something. I'm very happy that I asked the question, even though I did put you on the spot. <laughs> Non, non, c'est très bien et ça me rend très heureux d'avoir posé cette question euh, parce que ça vous a permis de, de dire ça. Because the point is, we are always uh, having things happen and being inconvenienced in one way or another that breaks the, the sort of model that we build of what would be ideal before you go on stage or what would be ideal, yeah, how much sleep you should get or something like that. 
parce qu'on est tous confrontés en permanence dans nos vies à ce que les choses telles qu'elles se passent peuvent être différentes des constructions qu'on en a faites, des attentes qu'on peut avoir, d'un idéal qu'on peut construire, de comment ça doit être quand je vais passer sur scène et autre chose. Et cette façon de rompre un petit peu avec ces habitudes permet de, de contacter cela. So real wisdom is to not wake up early and to get enough sleep. Et la vraie sagesse, c'est pas de se réveiller trop tôt et d'avoir assez <laughs> d'heures de sommeil en l'occurrence. And so it's very important in cultivating mindfulness and in the next two days that we will have together to really not fall into a certain kind of parochialism or a catechism about how mindfulness has to be in order to be authentic. C'est vraiment important dans ces conversations qu'on va avoir pendant ces deux jours et demi de ne pas rentrer dans une certaine vision de la pleine conscience, de la méditation, de la mindfulness qui soit une sorte de, de catéchisme rigide. We need to find ways that are comfortable enough for ourselves so that they really are uh, trustworthy. Il s'agit de, de trouver des manières avec lesquelles on soit suffisamment confortable pour qu'elles soient fiables. And nurturing. Et nourrissantes. And while it's really important to study with people like Jean Girard in your case, where you can really uh, experience uh, very, very good teaching, it's also important to realize that in order to live Uh, mindfully, you have to uh, find your own path into the formal practice and the extension of the practice into everyday life. Et je voudrais insister sur l'importance que ça a pour euh, cheminer dans cette approche de, de méditation, de, de suivre des, des enseignements de gens qui euh, sont correctement formés, et qui ont un, un bon niveau d'enseignement, et aussi à quel point, euh, pour mettre ça dans, euh, dans, dans sa propre vie, il y a l'aspect de pratique formelle et de pratique informelle, mais que chacun doit trouver sa propre voie dans ces différentes possibilités. So, let me just frame it as a kind of little, uh sort of uh, equation. There are an infinite number of ways to cultivate mindfulness in ways that are uh, really authentic uh, to the traditions out of which it has come. Il y a une très grande multiplicité de, de possibilités de uh, pratiquer, de cultiver uh, la, la pleine conscience telle qu'elle uh, est proposée de parler de façon authentique par les, les traditions anciennes. But that said, there are a larger number of infinite ways to screw it up big time. Mais uh, il y a un nombre encore plus uh, important de possibilités uh, de tout uh, rater uh, et de, de perdre son temps. So it really is important to understand the, the deep sources of mindfulness and then find ways to integrate them into your life that are real for you. And it does not mean buying into any kind of philosophy, catechism, or belief system. It's, it's a laboratory to discover who you really are. C'est vraiment très important de comprendre l'essence profonde de chacune de, de ces traditions et de propositions de pratiques de, de méditation pour faire sienne et trouver chacun son propre chemin pour réaliser qui on est vraiment. Et quand nous voyons des fantastiques performances, quand nous voyons de grand art, quand nous entendons de grande musique, quand nous entendons de grande poésie, il résonne avec nous pour, en quelque sorte, value the resonance itself and the knowing that your awareness already is and see that that beauty that's on the stage or in the movement or on the painting, that beauty's inside you. And the painting needs it and the performer actually needs it in you in order for us to, uh, what Thich Nhat Hanh would say, interbe. Et euh, quand on voit des, des performances de danse, de lecture, de comédie, de peinture euh, aussi euh, extraordinaires, ça euh, donne la possibilité de se rendre compte que cette, cette beauté, cette perfection est en fait euh, réellement présente en chacun d'entre nous et que dans euh, le fait de pouvoir euh, être euh, là, aller, aller voir, euh, se manifeste dans ce que Thich Nathan justement appelle si joliment l'interêtre. 
Alors, il me semble... And I think that they uh, go back to our own path because we all go through times of stress, of uh, trying to uh, mollify what is happening in our work life, in our private life. So thank you very much from the bottom of our heart because um, you've given us some very intimate and just comments. Thank you very much. Alors avant, avant peut-être. Before the last comments, you will have understood that it is the uh, aperitive session. Um, tomorrow we'll go more into, let us say, serious things. We're going to go into conferences where you will learn and understand better. John talked about traditions, and tomorrow morning we'll see how, where this this meditation comes from. How does it find its uh, roots in very long uh, traditions, long-standing traditions, even if they have been um, adapted to our world? It's Mark Desmet who is going to receive uh, his guests uh, tomorrow morning so that he can talk to you about those sources, uh, the roots of meditation. We'll present to you that uh, tomorrow morning, and then we will discover the well-meaning uh, society, what we want to um, build up this uh, caring society in the afternoon tomorrow. We'll talk about this, how mindfulness can transform our world. And then uh, Sunday, we'll come back to science, because it's very important to show that meditation is also experiences, there are figures, there are scanners, there are all sorts of things that can be very rational on explaining meditation. So we'll talk about science on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon we'll go back to health to see how all of this research, all of these studies which are being made uh, nowadays are showing results and uh, demonstrating that meditation can be introduced in hospitals, how the caring staff can also be helped in their work. So there's lots of things to give you. So the only thing that I'll give you today is for tomorrow morning is that uh, the doors are open at 9 o'clock, so there'll be a meditation led by John kabat -Zinn by, from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll come back. It's the light motif will go through uh, an artist's um, performance, and then we'll think about it. And it's the Steve Shehan, a musician who is a major percussionist artist who is going to make us vibrate in a new way. Tomorrow morning, uh, in introduction of the roundtable discussions. Now, to finish up, would you like to say any last words uh, to add anything? Sylvie, I can see with the mic, maybe not an end, because this is the beginning, really. That's all. It's a beginning. That's a good way of getting out of the question. Yeah, there's a lot of things that will be said. Uh, I don't want to add any more. Uh, I won't be with you, but uh, I was very happy to be able to be with you this evening with John and Jean Girard and Marion and yourselves, all of you. Uh, I hadn't been on stage for a long, long time. And for this opportunity, it really gave me a lot of pleasure. And I do hope that the world will be more beautiful later on. We all hope it. Et Marion qui reste. And Marion will stay with us at least tomorrow, maybe even until Sunday. Well, it would be nice to finish on Sylvie, but uh, if you want me to say something, I must say to specify, I was here at 7 a.m. Uh, I was playing truant between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., but I was there at 7. I just wanted to say. 
And tomorrow morning, of course, I shall be there. And tomorrow afternoon as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll go back to Marion Cotillard and the uh, ecological um, challenges is very important. John, thank you very much. I know that you're going to be with us until the very end. There'll be a major final conference with you. I know that. Uh, so it's not the last word. It's just see you tomorrow. Do you want to add anything? The only thing I want to do is thank Jean Girard for translating for me oh. both ways. <laughs> He's very, very good at it. Merci. Voilà, on espère que vous aurez pris Thank you. I hope that you had just as much pleasure as us to this conversation here on the stage. And uh, after the roundtables, you'll have uh, more Q and A uh, sessions. Uh, it was a little bit more intimate uh, tonight. Uh, we'll bid you a very good night, and we uh, wish to see you all tomorrow morning. Thank you.